Hello, welcome back. Um, I've been just fussing around a little bit. I added two new hard points, um, but the rotations aren't matching up right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and create a hard point um, uh, object, uh, a prefab, specifically so that we'll be able to tell what the hard points are. So what I'm just doing is I'm creating a little nub that's going to go at the tip of the hard point so we can tell which direction it's facing. Like that. And we're going to save that as a standalone prefab, like so. And then we're going to delete all of these hard points. And we're going to add in uh, the new hard points that we just created. Uh, oh. We have to make one change. This hard point doesn't need a collider. So uh, this will allow us to see that we've got all of the directions pointed in the right way. Um, and it'll also, later on, allow us to use multiple different kinds of hard points as we need to, uh, which is going to be a core part of our gameplay. So you can see now that there's a nub on each side, so we know that that's where they go. Ah, there was a problem. I was rotating on the wrong axis, which is why the old, the other, the hard points I was fussing around with weren't working quite right. Common problem. All right. So what I've just done is I've created. Uh, this is the same kind of thing that we had before. Um, we've only got four. Uh, just go ahead and make it zero, and we'll drag them on manually. So here's a neat trick. Uh, we can lock this in place like that, and then we can select all of these hard points and drag them on and then unlock it again. Uh, and that's a great way to handle it when we want to uh, drag multiple things into an array, because otherwise you've got to drag them one by one. Uh, so I just showed you a trick that hopefully you'll use a lot. So let's go ahead and see whether or not they lock on top of each other. They do. They lock on top of each other just fine. So I would just wanted to show you that this structure that we're building isn't going to be flat. Oh, I've got right and left reversed. Well, not really. Hmm. Well, whatever. If you don't like it, uh, you can reverse it. I'll put, probably put in an options menu. So it's not going to be just flat. We're going to be doing a lot of complicated stuff. But let's. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to replace this mesh with something nicer. Um, uh, once we do that, we're also going to change up this situation here. You see how it's got pointing, like you can see with my finger. Uh, you see how I'll pause there, point that out in the scene view. That'll work. You see how this here exists when it shouldn't? That should be considered a direct connection, but it's not because we actually connect it here. Similarly, all of these should be considered direct connections. Uh, and that's what we're going to be doing later on. Uh, but we have to build... The room has to understand that it's a room and has to understand the concept of a connection before we can start to deal with that sort of thing. So what we need to do in this episode is establish the concept of a room. Fundamentally, what a room is, is it's very much like a, a chunk of, of a Minecraft, except for um, we're not using uh, blocks that you add or remove, we're using basic structural elements just lined up. So for example, this room would be, uh, you know, door type 1 chunk, uh, empty chunk, uh, up and down chunk, uh, empty chunk, door type 2 chunk. And in this way, we're able to define all of the pieces uh, and each of these connectors uh, can be named something else. So, for example, this would be door type 1, whereas this would be, for example, vertical stair 1 wide, um, and similar stuff. So we're able to uh, uh, create quite a few different methods of connecting up, depending on what our needs are. And that's going to be a core gameplay element later. Um, so first things first, we have to make these rooms have a concept of what they are. So we're going to go ahead and create a new C Sharp script called room. Um, trying to decide, I think we actually need a room definition script as well. Room def. There we go. 
So we'll start with the room definition. Uh, and I don't think I'll be able to show you all the way through to the end in this one episode, because that would be another 20 minute episode, and the last 20 minute episode was a nightmare. All right, so here we got the room def. The room def does not need to be a mono behavior, uh, but it does need to be serializable. And to be honest, I can't remember what the keyword is. We'll deal with that later. Um, but you need to have a serializable. Is it just serializable? No, I, it's it's maybe system dot serializable or something. I don't remember. I'll have to look it up. Anyhow, uh, we're going to want it to be serializable so that we'll be able to save, load, and trade room definitions later on. But for now, we'll leave it like this. Because it's not a mono behavior, we don't need these functions. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to define a room map. But here's the key with this room map. Our room map is going to be uh, either uh, uh, mirror symmetric or radially symmetric depending on the kind of room we're dealing with. So in this case it's going to be mirror symmetric. So when I define a map, uh, for example if I say um, should I make it two-dimensional? No, we'll make it one-dimensional. If I say something like this and then I say public int width equals to public int height equal or uh, length equals to public int height equals one. If I were to do this, um, because it's symmetric uh, across the mirror, this width is actually not two. The width is three because our right hand side and our left hand side will be identical. But we don't need to represent them separately in the room definition because uh, we want the room to have that symmetry. On the other hand, if we don't want that symmetry, uh, we don't need to use that. So I just went on for a little bit about it only to say that we're not going to use it. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is when we define the room, we're going to define it symmetrically when we want to. Uh, and the reason for that is because we don't usually want entirely symmetric rooms. It's going to be more important for the circular rooms, so the tower chambers. All right, so um, we need to have a concept of what these integers mean. In the Minecraft, like I defined them using a definition, a very simple enum definition. And I'm going to do that here too for now, but please be aware that later on we're going to be replacing this enum stuff with a very, uh, uh, with a method of arbitrarily creating them. Uh, so we won't be using the enums. All right. So when we create a room, oh, uh, um, we'll just go ahead and and return something very static here. Uh, we don't need this part because we're going to be dealing with that right now. And now, and now the map, of course, starts initialized to, to zero because uh, that's what all of these arrays start as. So that means that right now all of our rooms should be a typical. But we want our rooms to have a little bit of, of a doorway. So let's go ahead and make this length uh, not two, but instead five. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a doorway uh, on each tip. So our x-axis, well, let's go ahead and just create it explicitly so that no one ever gets confused. You paying attention, Mono? I want you to wake up. Yay, Mono. Uh, so in case you haven't encountered it before, this is just the same thing that we would normally do on a two-dimensional array. We're just doing it on a three-dimensional array. Uh, 
Oh, uh, it should be noted that right now I'm going to assume that we're using the same uh, I'm going to assume that y is part of length, which is the blender way of doing it. Um, so we're going to have to remember that uh, we're doing it like blender does it, rather than like mine, rather than like uh, Unity does it, where y is height. Um, if that bites us out in the ass later, we'll we'll have to go back and fix it. All right, so now we have a hallway, and in case you can't picture it in your head, it's just a standard hallway with a door at each end and a stair up on one side in the middle and a stair down on the other side in the middle. Okay? So now what we need to do is we need to be able to turn that into a room. Uh, now, I mentioned before that we're going to have to do a lot of um, annoying uh, int work, fine, fine, whatever. Uh, we're going to have to do a lot of annoying creation, uh, and that's going to be okay. Oh, uh, that's that's really stupid of me. Sorry about that. I was programming in the wrong language for a while there, so I got used to some other way of doing it. All right, so um, uh, we're going to have to create a mesh to replace this mesh here. Uh, and to do that, we're going to go ahead and have a room chunk uh, definition. And this is basically identical to the chunks we used in Minecraft, except um, the things we end up with don't look like terrain. They look like rooms. Uh, so when we create a room chunk, it is a mono behavior. It's on an object, but it doesn't actually get initialized until we define it as having a particular room def. So here we're going to say if definition does not equal null, then set definition definition. All right, and here is where we will actually do all of the work for creating our uh, room. However, we need to do a couple of things here. Uh, we need to have a couple of components in our um, uh, I here in our chunk. One of the components we need is a mesh renderer, and another component that we need is a mesh filter. I think mesh renderer might actually be. No, it's not. A lot of them are predetermined, are uh, preset. Here in start, we need to go ahead and set all of those up. So mesh filter equals get component mesh filter uh, mesh renderer equals get component mesh renderer uh, oh yeah we also need a mesh collider And, of course, lastly but not leastly.
Okay, so when we go back into Unity now, um, we want this here. It has a mesh collider, a mesh render, and a mesh filter, just like we need. It also has a placeable object, just like we need. So we want to give it a room chunk. Um, let's be. Uh, let's actually get our typing correct. Uh, so we need to have this on there. And we'll just do that by dragging it on, like this. So that means that when we hit play, you can see that it filled all this stuff in with itself. It's all from the same object here. That means that we'll be able to replace this mesh here with a mesh of our choice, as well as our mesh collider with a, with a mesh, of, a mesh that, that matches our collision needs. But I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to do that next episode, because this episode was, is already uh, a bit long, and it's just going to get longer if we're not careful. There we go.